Okay, we have a very rough agenda that I've posted in the community call channel. Feel free to follow along. And with that, we'll start with the, the recording here. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the January Ethereum.org community call. Um, we can start with a quick round of introductions. Then we'll highlight some of our community contributions. We'll discuss what's on our Q1 roadmap. After that, there might be a pull-up, so stick around for that. Um, Luca will spend a bit of time talking about our translation program, and we'll answer questions from the community. So as far as intros go, I can start. Uh, I'm Joshua from Glasgow in Scotland. I'm the community lead for Ethereum.org. Feel free to ping me with any ideas or feedback you have for the community, or if you're interested in finding ways to contribute to Ethereum.org. Um, and I'll pass it to Paul. Hey, everyone. This is Paul. Um, Wackero. I am a front end dev here on the Ethereum.org team located out on the West Coast in Oregon. Um, I will pass along to Corwin. Hey, everyone. I'm Corwin or Corwin Teens. Um, I'm a web developer on the Ethereum.org team as well. And I live in Calgary, Canada. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions about contributing it to the code base, feel free to reach out. Um, I'll pass it to Luca. Trading kind of hey everyone, my name is Luca. I am working on the translation program for Ethereum.org and link the translation stuff. Um, yeah, based in Slovenia, Central Europe. I guess with that, I'll pass it on to Sam. Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, yeah, my name's Sam or Sam Ajamin on Discord or GitHub. Um, thank you all for joining. Excited to excited to be here for another community call. Um, so yeah, I'm a I'm a developer as well as the team lead here at Ethereum.org, um, and I'm based in in Lake Tahoe, California. I'll pass it over to Pablo. Um, hello, guys. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Pablo Petinari. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, yeah, as well, I'm working for the Ethereum.org team, and I'm a front-end developer. Um, I pass it back to Josh. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's everyone. Um, yeah, and once again, please, if you aren't speaking, make sure you're, your mic's muted. Um, one thing before we start this call, we always like to clarify is this is the community call for Ethereum.org, the website, uh, and obviously not a community call that represents the Ethereum network or the protocol directly. Um, we have uh, set up a Slido for this call, which allows anyone to ask any questions they may have for the team. If someone from the team could help me out and just post that again in the community call chat, if you've got any questions. You can be completely anonymous, so please do drop them in. Um, and as much as possible, we try to keep the conversation around the Ethereum.org itself, um, how to contribute, and just different ways in, in helping to push the ecosystem forward. Okay. But if you've got any other questions, feel free to ask them, and we'll do our best to answer. OK, moving on to community contribution highlights. Um, yeah, so as I'm sure you're all aware, Ethereum.org is an open source project. If there's anything on our roadmap, or even if it's not on our roadmap that you'd like to contribute, you can get in touch. A lot of the really high value work on Ethereum.org involves community members taking the initiative on something that they feel really passionate about. Um, so I am sharing my screen. Uh, the first thing we'd like to highlight was the work done by Joseph. I think I've seen him here on this call on our energy consumption page. Um, so yeah, the page itself is just a markdown file, so it's all text. We're looking to create a new template for that with our impending design hire, all on the roadmap, I digress a little. Um, but the content itself is just awesome. It explains the, um, the overall goals of Ethereum in terms of energy consumption, the sort of why Ethereum's energy consumption is currently so high and why burning energy for Ethereum was necessary. 
it also prevents the um, the current solutions to this problem, backs it up with hard numbers and highlights like the timeline of the merge and things like that for solving this. Um, and ends on a nice, I guess, optimistic note about our hopefully solar punk future. Uh, the thing I really like about this, and if you haven't seen it already, you should check it out, um, is that it assumes very little knowledge about Ethereum itself as a protocol. So if someone who doesn't know what they're talking about says you shouldn't use Ethereum because it's really harmful to the planet, then you can just drop them this link and... I guess, set the groundwork for a meaningful conversation on the problem itself. Um, one thing we did want to highlight is that we did drop the ball in this a little bit. Um, with the timeline, it just took us to actually get it in. It was originally proposed in August. It took us until December to actually get it live. Um, one thing we did was reflect on this. Um, as a result, outside of the work that we're doing with our our roadmap and our goals that we've set, we've also committed to allowing no PRs that are made by the community um, to be open for more than one month. So hopefully we can do a bit better in the future. Um, I guess that's all I've got to say on that. And I think Luca wanted to chat a little bit about the work done on our translation certificate. So I'll pass it over to him. Real quick, one one fun fact I wanted to add on the energy consumption page, just to give some some data behind it. That yeah, like I mean, we launched the page just over a month ago. It's already received ten thousand page views and gets you know a couple hundred page views every day. So really good to see like the kind of impact that a community member can make. Um, just by contributing content. And I think it shows, you know, the reach Ethereum.org has obviously in terms of just like trying to provide a credible source of information for the community. Um, so excited to see it, um, you know, continue to be referenced elsewhere as well as, as something to point to. Um, yeah, so moving on, uh, another major contribution that we wanted to highlight is the translator certificate that we introduced at the start of this year. I just posted the link, link in the community called chat. This was designed by Scott, uh, an amazing developer who has been very active on ethereum.org. He previously designed a lot of our PO apps, uh, suggested the designs for our community hub revamp. You can find him on our Discord as Scott1up. So, if, if you're looking to get some design work done, he might be exactly who you're looking for. Uh, thanks for the great work on this, Scott. We really do appreciate it. Um, a couple of words on the translator certificate itself. This is our latest effort to acknowledge our translators and support them in any way possible. The requirements for the certificate are a bit more strict than other acknowledgements we have, since this is somewhat more professional and we want to ensure we're issuing it to active translators, providing high quality translations. The translators can use this as a reference if they are professional translators or want to start translating professionally. It can also serve as a basis to add another field of expertise to their translator portfolio, something like that. For contributors who aren't, professional translators, they can use this to show their active involvement in this space and showcase their dedication to Ethereum. Um, anyone else can just print this out and put it on their wall or whatever they want to do with it. But yeah, it's, we are happy. We are able to acknowledge our translators in more positive ways that can help impact their so careers this is their the actual Ethereum space. This is the coin, the community. Mm. This is one of their people. Hi, so can community. everyone so please one of make sure you are muted once again? Um, yeah, and just to add to what Luca was saying, um, I'm sharing my screen just now if you want to check it out definitely caused a lot of jealousy in the team for the people who aren't bilingual and can't actually get this. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in that, please do check it out. Um, yeah, and so once again, thanks to...
yeah, once again, thanks to Joseph. Uh, thanks to Scott for their contributions and just helping to make Ethereum.org just a little bit better. Yeah, so moving on to our Q1 roadmap. So it's the start of the year, which means we've decided what we want to be working on for the next three months. Um, we'd like to just spend a few minutes chatting about specific roadmap items. So first up, we've got Paul, who's going to speak a little about our uh, about our run a node epic. Sure, sure. Give me one sec here. I'll see if I can share my screen. Mm. <laughs> Is that okay? Um, so I know at one of the previous community call we had had a chat about one of the upcoming endeavors was to form a more user friendly page to discuss running a node, trying to bring it down to the level where you're potentially getting people who have never considered it, have no idea what is involved in it, or may have previously thought that the only way to do this was through a command line or required expensive machinery. So this is still in a preview mode right now, and there's still going to be some changes to it. But I can just quickly walk you through the idea here. Um, this page is, that, like I said, it's it's more geared towards a little bit of people who haven't this before. There's, there's some of the basic of what it actually means to run a node. Um, and then kind of scrolls through and gives some emphasis to who, which is really anyone. Um, and that's kind of the point of this page is to emphasize that anybody who's part of this network can and should consider running a node. Um, and it is actually relatively easy nowadays. Um, for why run a node, we got some different cards here and some different things that people can go through and read a little bit more on. Um, but I won't spoil it all right now. Um, this will change a little bit in the order when it finally goes live. But the idea here is that we're going to have two different paths for people to pick from. You can either go down the build your own path or you can buy this thing fully loaded. There's a couple different services that exist right now, Dapnode and Avado, that are both supply hardware um, that comes preloaded with, with software that will essentially make it a, an app-like experience, a, a, you know, kind of a point and click and can literally control it from your mobile phone. Um, and you can manage your uh, so there's some notes on staking and using smaller, you know, lighter weight computers in here as well. And some some context as far as kind of how far we've come. We used to be pretty much all command line based if you wanted to run a run a uh, client. And now we have some better options. So hopefully some people will be able to check this out and and maybe reconsider the idea of running a node in the future. Obviously, there's still a lot of nodes out there, but the more the better. Um, I would encourage everyone to check it out once it's live. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. Um, yeah, and I'll remind everyone as we're going through this that we do have the Slido. So if you have any specific questions about anything we cover, please do pop them in there and we'll try and get to them at the end. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, so next up, I think um, Corwin wants to speak a little bit about the work he's been doing on the, the EVE 2.0 reboot. Sorry, should I mute myself? Um, sorry about that. I'm, yeah, I'd like to talk about the ETH2 rebrand that we're doing on ethereum.org. This has been a pretty um, high priority work item for the start of this quarter. It's used, um, or rather it's touched every aspect of our website from the translation program to what our developers are working on, just content to um, trying to rebrand away from the ETH2, ETH1 um, references for Ethereum. Part of the reason we want to do this, and the main reason is because um, ETH2 has been kind of deprecated as a, um, as a term for Ethereum. Originally, this was referring to the proof of stake chain um, in an old roadmap for that transition, and has since changed with the merge to be uh, referred to as the consensus client, and then ETH1, um, formerly ETH1, is now referred to as execution client. Um, and with this change, we've gone through the website, uh, Ethereum.org, to, to reflect these changes in the naming. So if you go today and you look at 
the website, you'll still see Ethereum 2.0. We have a release coming out that was just um, put up for version 3.7 of the website. Um, so today we'll be putting this release out and this changes from Ethereum 2.0 to Ethereum upgrades. And within this um, change, you won't see any references to ETH 1 or ETH 2 without them being like, what happened to ETH 2 type of thing. And we'll go in and explain. ETH1 is now the execution client. Um, it handles yeah, the transactions, the data, whereas ETH2 is now the consensus client. Um, so we're trying to move away as a community from referring to these two clients as ETH1 and ETH2, mostly um, to have an accurate, accurate representation of what's going on with the actual roadmap, but also to try and move away from kind of an attack vector for scams. So. If you ever see someone come in to a Discord channel or someplace where you might find scammers being prominent, if you ever see someone being like, oh, you need to switch your ETH for ETH2 to work on the proof of stake chain or on the ETH2 chain, um, there is no ETH2. We want to make clear there's no ETH2. <laughs> and if you see any um, malicious activity like that, try and call it out and um, make sure that people aren't getting hurts in this kind of like attack vector of confusion with the term of ETH2. But with that all being said, we have a change with this roadmap to the upgrades. Um, so every page now you'll find, um, whether it's the Beacon Chain, the Merge, Shard Chains, the Vision, um, all pages that used to be under ETH2 will now be just housed under upgrades. This also will allow us to, as the roadmap um, develops, we can just throw it under the upgrades bucket of the website instead of trying to have to find a new um, section for this. Um, so it helps us avoid scope creep in our dropdowns as well, which is, is going to be great. Um, yeah, pass it back to Josh here. Thanks. Thank you, Corwin. And I'll just reiterate that, yes, although the, the naming of Ethereum 2.0 or ETH2 or whatever you want to call it is being phased out. This doesn't change the actual Ethereum roadmap at all. So don't freak out in that sense. Everything's still staying the same, apart from we're just using a different name to hopefully be a little bit more accurate. Right. I'll, I'll reiterate that as well and just make sure it's very clear that this doesn't change the roadmap overall. It is more just a naming change. And the goal is more for clarity. Um, I think there's a lot of confusion over the ETH1 and ETH2 names being sequential, like one is after the other and replaces the other, which isn't quite accurate. Over time, ETH1 has been used to refer to more the main net we're used to, and ETH2 has been used to refer to this other currently you know, proof-of-stake beacon chain. And in the end, these are going to be merged together to replace the current consensus model for our current main net. Um, so they're not, it's not one leads to the next, and when ETH2, there is no one upgrade that leads to quote-unquote ETH2. It's a whole series of upgrades that are being rolled out over over time, obviously, to handle the scaling problems and other issues that we have with the network. So hopefully this helps clear things up where we have two different layers, execution, consensus, and they will soon be merged into one network. Right. Thanks, Paul. Um... Yeah, so I'm going to share my screen again, if you'd like to follow along. Um, the last item that I'd like to chat about is creating a web free explainer page on ethereum.org. Um, so this is a little bit earlier than the other two items we've just shown, so we don't have anything nice and pretty to show you just yet. Uh, one interesting thing to look at on our roadmap is this chart. Pretty steady for the last two years. Then in October of last year, the search volume for Web3 just absolutely skyrocketed. Uh, so people are clearly motivated to learn about this. Um, the problem that we've noticed is that when you search for what is Web3, you largely get a, you largely get a bunch of articles. Uh, some of them are well-written. Most of them aren't well written. A few of them are just completely wrong. Um, so maybe a controversial opinion, but I don't really think so. I don't really 
believe that we want journalists who aren't really involved in Web3 and probably don't know what it is, explaining Web3 to people who are clearly interested in maybe taking it a bit further. We've just had the holiday season. I'm sure many of you were sat around tables with family members who may have known about your interest in crypto. Um, if they did, I'm sure you got hammered with different questions about what is Web3, what is this decentralization and magic internet money. The whole idea of this page is to answer that question for people. A sort of gentle introduction for non-technical individuals without all the buzzwords that you'd normally find in this sort of thing. Um, yeah, and as always, um, because all of the items on our roadmap are on this site, they're all open source. So if you have comments, feedbacks, or are interested in helping out in any way, please do ping us in Discord or leave a, a comment on the issue itself. Uh, anything else anyone wants to add on the roadmap before we move on? Cool. Next up, Poaps. Yeah, so I'm sharing my screen um, on it and on the agenda itself. There are some instructions for how to actually claim your Poap. So I just put the passcode onto the screen share if you're interested in grabbing it. It's all lowercase, all one word, January community. To claim it, you need to go to our Discord server and in the top right, you'll find the POAP bot. Just send a message to the POAP bot with the passcode. Once again, that's January community, all lowercase, all one word. Um, and if you click on the link that the what bot sends you, then you should be able to claim it to your wallet address. And we'll just wait a minute or so just to let everyone do that before we jump on to something else. Just while we've got this moment, I'd just like to ask to make sure that you are muted if you aren't speaking. Um, otherwise, when we get to the questions, you'll be muted at the server level and you won't be able to speak up. Okay, so let's give it another minute or so. Just after this, our um, translation lead, Luca, is just going to speak a little bit about the different translation efforts across the project just now. So I'll stop sharing my screen and uh, I'll pass it over to you, Luca. So I guess we might as well just get into it um as people are claiming their po apps so the translation program as many of you probably know is an effort to get the website translated into as many languages as possible and make this content accessible to people who might not speak english at all or not speak english well enough to be able to learn in English, especially about a complicated topic such as Ethereum. Um, one thing that I wanted to highlight today is the recent update to source content in Crowdin and the new pages that we've uploaded to Crowdin. So I've just pasted the link to the content versions page on the website where you can find more information about how we divide our content into different content buckets and what that what what each content bucket contains let me just share my screen and show you in practice what that looks like so We've recently updated a lot of source content in Crowdin. We do this occasionally in order to make sure we're actually translating the latest version of the website. Moving forward, we plan on updating source content every month. 
we have also uploaded new pages to Crowdin. These are the pages that have been recently added to the website and aren't being translated yet. Um, examples of this contain the community hub, the energy consumption page, the Ethereum support page, security and scam prevention page, basically just the recent pages that have been added to the website. Similarly, we have added all the recently added developer tutorials to Crowdin that weren't being translated yet. This includes some of the most popular developer tutorials on the website, like the NFT tutorial series. Similarly to the updates, we will also be uploading new pages to Crowdin every month to make sure we're translating all the new content on the website. Uh, and finally, we have created some new content buckets, which will allow us to get translated content reviewed and added to the website even faster. So this includes a specific content bucket for Ethereum upgrades that you can see here, a specific content bucket for the community pages, and also have divided the developer tutorials into different buckets based on their popularity, based on the number of page views that these tutorials get. So this will also allow us to add translated developer tutorials that are high impact, that have a high volume of traffic, to the website faster. Now, as Corwin presented earlier, we are also currently working on the ETH3 brand and moving away from using ETH2 terminology. Once this is done, we will need to get the updated content translated as well in order to remove mentions of ETH2 from the translations. This means that the Ethereum upgrades bucket, so this is content bucket number four for anyone watching my stream or active in Crowdin. Um, this upgrades bucket will be updated again in Crowdin next week with the new content not containing mentions of ETH2. And we would definitely appreciate some assistance in getting this bucket translated as soon as possible. So there will also be um, other notifications and we will highlight this and point it out to the community. And for the time being, this content bucket will probably be highest priority to get translated so that we can also move away from the E2 terminology in the translations as well. So yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to highlight about the translation program. To Great. Thanks, Luca. And thanks to all the translators involved in that work as well. Um, I'm going to share my screen again. Cool. So for the remainder of the call, we'll spend that on CUNY. Um, we have a list here ready to go, courtesy of our Slido, but feel free to add more as we go, or if you want to, you can unmute and speak up. Uh, I guess we can just start with the most upvoted. So yeah, if you go through the list and you see something that you really want answered, the likelihood is we won't get to absolutely everything, so make sure you upvote the questions that you want to see answered the most. Um, top voted comment is from Anonymous asking, saying, hi, I want to contribute, but I am not a coder. Anything else I can do and contribute to? Um, yes. If you're bilingual, please get in touch with us on Discord and join the translation program. If you understand Ethereum well, then find areas that we don't have content for on our site and make suggestions or, or write the content yourself. Um, or if you're just learning about Ethereum, I guess, you can highlight any simple mistakes you might find on the site, that's really helpful. Or perhaps you see something that's too complex, call it out, or maybe try rephrasing it yourself to make it simpler for the, the next person. You can do that too. Um, anything I missed, anyone? Nope. Yeah, I would broadly just say, I mean, 
from a content perspective, like it's hard to understate how valuable that is. Um, even if you don't code to help keep the website up to date, as you folks are all, all probably aware, like Ethereum as an ecosystem just moves incredibly fast, right? So like as Ethereum.org continues to add new content, for instance, you know, we highlighted this energy consumption page. We now have hundreds of pages of content in English on the website, which then gets translated into tens of languages to create thousands of pages on the website, right? Like just making sure that resources are up to date, that we're linking to accurate information, um, that we're removing stale information. Um, it may not sound sexy, but can be a very helpful way for you to kind of, I mean, keep tabs on the ecosystem and keep yourself up to date, um, but also be able to, you know, help out the millions of people who are reading this content um, and helping ensure stuff stays up to date is like just a huge way to do that. So in the community chat, I, I link to our main contributing page. From there, there's a lot of detailed information, whether it's adding products or community articles or, you know, new exchanges that might provide additional features, adding glossary terms. Um, I, I feel like glossary terms are a nice easy one in, in the sense that with the translation program Luca talked about, one thing we're really trying to do with Ethereum.org is like become a, a canonical resource for Web3 related translations. Um, all the content on Ethereum.org is licensed under Creative Commons. We want other projects to be able to use the translations that our community has put together to just make the entire ecosystem more accessible um, to more people from more languages overall, right? So like, even if you only speak English, um, there's open issues on GitHub to add additional glossary terms um, and add additional content that I think can have a huge impact across the ecosystem. And it's a great way to, you know, build your resume and get noticed in the space as someone who's contributing to open source. Yeah. Thanks, Sam. I would disagree on one thing. I think fixing typos is definitely sexy. And if you find any, please do open an issue or a PR for it. Um, next up, we've got Jay Cook. I think Joseph, I've seen you on the call. Um, hey, Joseph. You so, just grow up in the Dubai. Yeah, and I said um, also that I've been an artist or I was experienced. Sorry about that. Yeah, so Joseph says the roadmap's great. Um, re L twos to encourage adoption. It's critical to explain why L two over alternative layer ones, um, and nuance over which L two and why. Ideas to do this most effectively. Um, this is on our roadmap, I guess, and what we're building a layer two page. I am very conscious that I'm talking a lot here. If anyone wants to jump in and speak to this. I'm happy to hop in on this one. Sure. Um, yeah. No, thanks, Jay Cook, for posting this. I definitely agree. Um, there is a big difference, obviously, between layer twos and alternative layer ones. Um, and we do look forward to highlighting that soon. We've talked about the ETH2 rebrand a couple of times now. Part of that change is going to be the slash ETH2 page on our website is now going to be slash upgrades. Which is going to broaden what it what it actually makes sense to go in that section. Um, for example, potentially EIPs and potentially layer two scaling solutions, because there's more to the upgrades than just the protocol layer upgrades that were focused on scaling, which was kind of the original bucket of ETH two. So as that broadens out, I think that would be a nice home for that. We've discussed this a little bit internally. Um, I'd like to bring some content about twos to that page, but also discuss potentially having a dedicated layer two page. And, uh, and have this be something that's more beginner friendly and user friendly, something you know that's not buried in the development doc. Many people are, mm -hmm. you know, lay users are likely to miss. I want to use that as an opportunity to help educate and and explain kind of what you're talking about here, Jay Cook, or differences. Uh, won't necessarily go into all those differences now, but but you know, briefly 
they rely on Ethereum security, essentially. You can do a lot of things with L2s uh, that, that keep the trust model of Ethereum at its core, and you don't need to, to rely on a whole different distributed network or hopefully distributed network uh, for the security of your funds and activities. Uh, so definitely on the, on the list, I do agree that, that bringing more education around this stuff is, is pretty important. Um, and we're going to try to do that through the expansion of the upgrades page. Yeah, and I think some things to note that we would be adding is like, we'll obviously be talking about L2s, what they are, um, kind of like you were asking here, but we'll also be talking about um, bridging. Um, so when you want to bridge your assets over from mainnet or exchange, we'll highlight some bridges that you would use. We'll go into kind of like what bridge, bridges are um, so that we can clarify that because that's definitely an important piece to L2s at least to like understand how to get onto them at the very least. Um, so we'll highlight some information around that. Um, we'll also add some information around like uh, resources for finding like token lists for, let's say you're using a decentralized exchange, looking at a little bit of a like list on that page to make, um, make it easier for users to use L2 as well. Um, and we'll probably link out to some pages like Arbitrum's portal, which highlights applications that are on their L2s already. So try and make it as accessible for someone new to see what's going on in L2, how to get on L2, and quickly understand what it is versus kind of what's in our developer docs, which is more of like a technical description of what L2s are. Thanks, Corwin. Thanks, Paul. Um, Joseph, if you're still with us, um, I know you're very into this stuff and you've probably put some thought into it before the question. So if you've got any thoughts or ideas, feel free to share them now. Or Yeah, OK, thank you. Um, hey, hello. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, well, I mean, th yeah, that's great to hear everything you just said. That really, the question just came to my mind when I was looking through the roadmap because it looked like what was there on the L2 was mostly practical instructions for how to how to onboard. And I just think even now, uh, even fairly technical minded people that are already well into Ethereum, it's easy to get confused about the firstly why you would use layer two. Um, if it's just cheap transactions, why you would use L2 over just going onto another chain where the transactions are as cheap or possibly cheaper. Uh, and also which L2 to use. And, you know, you might spend a bunch of gas moving some funds over from layer one onto layer two and then not really know what to do when, once you've got there. You know, so it just seems like um, Ethereum.org is, is kind of a lot of people's gateway onto the whole Ethereum ecosystem. And if we can... You know, optimize for explaining some of those things and why it's important to inherit security down from Ethereum layer one. And, you know, even going into the um, multi chain versus cross chain arguments from uh, Vitalik's post about why you might want to keep your, keep your funds on an Ethereum, uh, you know, inside the Ethereum ecosystem rather than going to another chain might just be really useful for encouraging more adoption. But I, I mean, I guess. That's just a bit of background to the question. You've, you've kind of already answered it in, in your answers, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I appreciate that. And definitely, you know, Vitalik's discussion on this recently is definitely worth noting. And we'll definitely go into, you know, how we frame the page in the future. Appreciate it. Yeah, definitely appreciate the feedback there and completely agree. You know, I think similar to what Paul just demonstrated with like the run a node page that we'll be releasing soon, right? Like it's critical to explain the why in addition to the what and the how. And I think that's exactly what you're getting at of like, what are the specific benefits outside of just transaction fees that layer two provides? Um, and yeah, if you folks do have ideas, like we're happy to collaborate and we'll definitely continue to seek feedback as we as we iterate on that page. Um, but clearly that's a key component of it, right? Like if there is an outage on this network, can you recover your funds or are you completely reliant on whoever's operating that network? Um, important considerations when 
when bridging your funds to to anywhere else than layer one Ethereum. Okay, thanks very much, Joseph. Um, I guess we'll move on to the next question. Sean, um, what are you all most excited about in 2022? I like this question. Um, Sean, are you with us on the call? Maybe? No? Uh, maybe we could do a quick round robin with the team. Um, it's not very clear if you're talking about Ethereum or just generally, so I guess I'll answer both. Um, really excited for the merge this year, the adoption of L2s. Real world, really excited to go on vacation overseas um, for the first time in a while with my, my son. Um, pass it to Paul. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll try to keep it brief too. Uh, I'll second the events, IRL and real life events all year long. Um, and I'm just putting that out there in general. I'll drop our events page in the com uh, community call chat. Check them out because there's a lot of them this year that are already planned. There's more beyond just this, which we you know are continuously trying to update this page to keep it accurate. But a lot of events all over the world this year. Um, I plan to go to to a handful of them, obviously not all, but I'd encourage everyone to check these out because this is one of the, especially if you're interested in getting involved in the community, this question has already been floated. These events can be excellent ways to go get your face out there, go see other people in person who are working in the space. You're going to just people exude enthusiasm at these events. So if you haven't been to one yet, I would definitely consider checking one of them out. Um, if there's one nearby and you can't get tickets, I would go anyways. Honestly, go. You'll see people there. You can meet a lot of people. Uh, really, really fun events. And I would definitely encourage everyone to check it out. That being said, also the merge, definitely excited about that with adoption and watching the ever you know, continuing expansion of DAOs in this space. That's what I'm excited about. I'll pass it along. Let's go. Corwin, what you got? Um. I think for myself, most specifically, what I'm excited about this year is um, L2 and bridging. I think we are just starting to see layer twos come online um, and more specifically like generalized L2s, kind of like Arbitrum where you can deploy your smart contracts on there. But I'm also curious to see what happens with more <clears throat> application specific L2s as well. I think we'll see some cool stuff like the Reddit, um, I think Reddit's partnered with Arbitrum, I believe, but kind of seeing what some larger applications are going to be doing with Layer 2 technology on Ethereum. Um, curious to see where some mainstream adoption of Ethereum goes this year. We just saw that Twitter this week put out Twitter Blue, or their NFT support in Twitter Blue at the very least. Um, and so I'm kind of curious to see where this goes with mainstream uh, companies this year, um, especially as we've seen Ethereum settle more um, more value than like the Visa network, for example, in 2021, what type of uh, things are other companies going to experiment with on Ethereum? Um, so that's kind of what I'm excited, just to see what type of adoption gets used this year with layer twos coming online and, and making it a little more accessible for people. Um, Pass it on to Pablo, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, for this year, I would say, of course, the the merge. And yeah, I agree with Corwin. I I would like to see more adoption on layer twos. I want to see how the applications evolve in in Arbitrum or Optimism. I yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um. Yeah, talking more about the site, the Ethereum.org site, I would say I would like to see if we could make more Web3 features on the site and yeah, make that transition. Uh, I don't know if, if that is going to be possible this year, but yeah, I I would like to to do that. And yeah, okay, I pass it to Luca. So excited about a couple of things. First of all, the merge. It's been in the works for a while. Looks like this is going to be the year. That is going to be super exciting. Uh, and I'm also, like the guys have already mentioned, very excited about Layer 2s. 
specifically the improvements that they are making and will continue to make. The year has started off incredible. Um, optimism just onboarded Curve. Aave governance has voted to deploy Aave on optimism. They've had two 30% fee reductions in the last two weeks alone. Um, the Arbitrum ecosystem is already large and keeps on expanding. Uh, Darknet just came out with a massive upgrade this week that, and they basically contain all the functionality you would, have, you would expect from a production ready blockchain. ZK Sync is making improvements and is ready to onboard more people. So yeah, the, the ZK rollups in particular are looking like they're making progress. And I feel like this year, so many more people are going to get onboarded to layer twos and experience what it is to use Ethereum with instant confirmations and super low fees. And I feel like most people will be surprised by how amazing layer twos can be and will stay there forever, basically. That's what I'm excited about. And with that, I guess, pass it along to Sam. Yeah, thanks, guys. Um, I mean, I'll, I guess, just echo what everyone mentioned. I think a lot of great points. Um, I'd second Paul's point in particular. I think if folks on the call have never been able to attend like a real life Ethereum event, I know it is like a fortunate privilege to be able to do so, but I would highly recommend it. Just like the friendly community, the, the contagious energy, the atmosphere. Um, it's a lot of what pulled me into the space and keeps me around. Um, so I know I'll be at yeah, ETH Denver in less than a month. Um, if anyone's going to be there, yeah, feel free to reach out. Would love to connect. Um, and I'll post a link specifically DevCon, which, you know, we haven't had an event since uh, DevCon Osaka in Japan in, in 2019. That's essentially the annual primary conference that the Ethereum Foundation puts on every year. And I would say is seen as somewhat of the main event in the Ethereum world each year. Um, and that'll be in Bogota, Colombia later this year. So pretty stoked for that. Hope folks can make it. I know a lot of moving pieces with, with events this year. Um, otherwise, you know, plenty of virtual, <laughs> virtual based metaverse conferences to, <laughs> to potentially try out, but yeah, highly encourage people, um, to get involved with those and can be a great way to, you know, connect with people, find new jobs, find interesting opportunities. Um, so I think worthwhile if you can make it happen. Yeah, I'll plus one that. Um, I just want to make maybe a second just to make some space in case anyone on the call wants to unmute and ask a question. Um, feel free to do so. If not, we can just move on to the other questions. But again, you don't have to feel shy. Cool, we'll move on. Um, we've got another question from Anonymous asking, how do we stop the scammers from ruining crypto? Is education the only answer? I think so. Uh, education and time, I guess. We already have the page on a security page on ethereum.org. Um, is there more we can do to help with this problem? Probably. Uh, I also think that over time, as more people start to understand the pitfalls of crypto, um, things will get better as well. This happens with every evolution of money. If you're interested in diving into that rabbit hole a little bit, I'd really recommend everything that Robert Breedluff has written on his blog. Um, I'll post a link in the chat to that. Anyone else have any thoughts on this? Yeah, I agree. I think, uh, I think education is going to be a big part of it. However, I don't think it'll ever just fully go away. I mean, there's, there's scams that are littered throughout our world in different forms where there's the opportunity to take advantage of people for economic gain. People are going to try. Um, I think it's going to be a combination of education as well as things that like scored captures and blockers, things that, you know, we fortunately have to put people through to try to clean up these these social spaces online to try to limit you know who gets in 
we unfortunately do have to go through on a regular basis and, and ban people from the server because they're they're obviously trying to take advantage of people in different ways. Um, and it's not always clear for us, you know, who is, who is not. It's a challenge for sure. Ongoing issue is open to suggestions. I do think it's going to get better with time. We'll learn a bit more. But sadly, I don't go away fully, to be honest. Yeah, I agree. Uh, next question from Amar. What are you doing to make Ethereum more accessible? Um, I guess that depends on what you mean by accessible. So we do have our Q1 epic around accessibility. Um, I'd be curious if Pavel maybe wants to weigh in on that. And that's about the... Yeah, uh, yeah go ahead. Yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, as Josh mentioned, this is... Um, a goal for us for this quarter. It was uh, a goal too in our uh, previous quarter, but for different, different reasons, we couldn't make it. Um, so to give a little bit of context, uh, we are trying here to to make our website more accessible for everyone, basically. Um, we have users that navigate our site only using uh, the keyboard, for example, or using a screen reader. So we want to make the site accessible and that is have a good experience navigating uh, with those devices. Um, so answering the questions, uh, I would say that at first we are planning to basically make uh, an audit in our code and trying to to follow. Uh, well-known uh, guidelines or standards uh, from the Web3, for example. Um, and then we we want to to improve the the navigation experience using uh, screen readers and or navigating the site with only the keyboard. So we were we are going to to audit first and. And then, of course, we are open to hear suggestions from, from you guys. Uh, we, are, we don't have any accessibility expert in the team, so we are uh, open to, to suggestions. Um, yeah, and finally, I just want to mention that this goal is uh, we, it's difficult to, to establish a, a scope, right? Uh, it's a never-ending goal to increase the accessibility. So for sure, we will have in the future more uh, more goals uh, on improving the accessibility of the site. So yeah, happy if you have any suggestions or, or if you want to discuss this uh, on the chat or you can uh, message me. Yeah, I also yeah. have a couple of very quick points I'd like to add. So if you're speaking, talking about making ethereum.org more accessible, we have the translation program, the goal of which is to make the content, this content related to Ethereum, more accessible to everyone who might not speak English at all, or maybe they don't feel comfortable reading in English, learning about highly technical topics in English. If you are talking about making Ethereum more accessible in regards to fees, use layer twos. You inherit the security of Ethereum and the fees are minimal. That's it. Let's, um, yeah, I guess go back to John. Yeah, very broad topic. Uh, and also in terms of content, I think most of the content on our roadmap is also aimed at making Ethereum more accessible. Certainly the um, the Web3 Explainer, Layer 2 page, a wallet's revamp, run a node, all of that. So yeah, we're trying to tackle that problem from quite a few different angles. Um, very conscious of the time, I guess we can try and quickly fire through a couple more. Um, what sort of plans are there to highlight more of the public good space from Rory? Um, that's a really good question, not one I immediately have an answer for. Maybe someone else on the team wants to speak a little bit about the other work we've been doing with the CLR. Yeah, I can touch some on that. I think that's, Roy, a great question. We encourage input on that. I mean, it's a pretty broad area. Um, 
But obviously the Ethereum community and the crypto community more broadly are realizing like, hey, this technology gives us some incredible coordination power, um, whether it's, you know, focused on climate change or open source software or public goods generally, like this global movement does have the capability to um, influence a lot of change and a lot of capital formation that like, you know, even nation states can't necessarily tackle on their own. So the, the whole design space and the opportunity space, you know, is pretty boundless. So we definitely want to do what we can to highlight that. Um, you know, we do call out um, certain public goods on our, our grants page, which basically just shows like different grant opportunities that people can find um, who are trying to, for instance, build open source software or public education goods. So there are there are there are paths to receive funding through that. Um, you know, on our DApps page, for instance, we 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 mention Gitcoin, Gitcoin Grants as a well-known um, crowdfunding platform for public goods. Um, and our team over the past almost year part time has been tr- contributing to a project, uh, ClearFund, CLR dot fund. Um, and I guess I just touch on that, you know. The Ethereum Foundation is thinking about this more holistically and more broadly um, in the sense that, you know, the Ethereum Foundation is a nonprofit and our primary activity is giving money to public goods in the space to just like benefit the Ethereum ecosystem more broadly. Um, And you can find allocation updates on blog.ethereum.org around how the Ethereum Foundation thinks and about how they distribute those funds. Um, Encourage you to check out recent posts on like the client incentive program, for instance. Um, And it's not something our team focuses on specifically, but I can tell you the Ethereum Foundation is looking to experiment with more ways of funding public goods um, and distributing and decentralizing the power of deciding which projects receive those goods. so if you have ideas, maybe it's, you know, creating an additional use case on ethereum.org to specifically talk about crowdfunding potential and like ability to coordinate and fund public goods um, just to help grow awareness of like what public goods actually are, how much our world relies on them in general. I think it's a much broader movement that's bigger than just ethereum.org. But I think there's definitely stuff we can do and, again, would encourage input on it because, yeah, I think it's a huge opportunity and a very important space for us to potentially help solve. Yeah, great answer. Thanks, Sam. Um, so we've seems we've not managed our time very well. Um, I'm aware we've got quite a lot of questions left, but I think we're going to have to call it at that. Uh, what I will do after the call is we'll go through and just spend some time answering all of these questions in the community call chat. So even now, if you've got another question like answered, feel free to pop it in there and I'll spend a little bit of time later on today just going through those and, and answering them for you. Um, cool. And with that, yeah, just want... sorry, go ahead. I was going to say real quick, uh, the Slido in the future, if we do use this method again, I just encourage people to take a look at the questions that are there and upvote ones that may be similar to a question you have, um, if possible, because that way we don't kind of fragment the same question over multiple things and then they end up lower down on the list. That's one little hack to try to get your question answered. Yeah, great point. Thanks, Paul. Um, so yeah, I think we'll we'll call it that. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending. Um, sorry if we never got to your question, but we'll answer that later, hopefully. And we'll see you all again next month, hopefully. Hey, thanks everyone. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone.